Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome to part two in my video series on landing a data science job in 2022. In the last video, I talked about the first step in the job search process, which was how to target the right position. If you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend watching it first as this series is walking through the steps of the job search process in order. If you have already seen part one, then you're in the right place. Now that you know how to target the right position, this video will look at the next step, how to get interviews. I'm going to talk about different ways to get interviews and how to approach those ways efficiently so that you get enough interviews for you to land an offer. In this video, we will cover three different ways to get interviews as well as what to do if you have been job searching for a while and haven't landed an interview yet. Let's start by looking at the different ways you get interviews in the first place. There are three basic ways to get interviews. Raw applications, reaching out to gatekeepers, and getting referrals. This diagram compares these three methods in terms of time effort and effectiveness. Let's go over all of them from the lowest effort to the highest effort. The first one is raw applications. Raw applications just means submitting your resume to job openings. To do that, you are going to need to start by searching for job openings. The most common place to look is typically big job boards such as LinkedIn and Indeed. But before you go to those job boards, I recommend going directly to the websites of the companies you are interested in. There you can find the specific role you are looking for and the websites will have the most accurate and up-to-date job postings. Of course, to do this, you need to know what companies you want to work for. To better help with that, I have created two lists of well-known tech companies. One list is companies that hire for analytics-driven roles, and the other list is those that hire for algorithm-driven roles. You can download the PDF link in the description below. And from there, you can click on the company to go to their career page for your own search. If you think these lists are helpful, feel free to share this PDF or my video to your friends. The other thing you can do to increase your chances with raw applications is to take the time to do a bit of personalization. It can be very tempting to simply send out the same resume to hundreds of jobs, but remember that that is what everyone else is doing as well. If you want to stand out and get an interview, then putting in the extra effort is important. Do a little research on the coming and tweak your resume to best fit the position. This effort shows a much higher level of interest in the job and can greatly increase the response rate you get to your applications. As you can tell, raw application is the most common way to apply for jobs and get interviews, which means there's often a lot of competition. When sending out raw applications, there's no telling how many people you could be competing against. That's why you want to pair this with other ways to get interviews. The second method to get interviews is reach out to gatekeepers. A gatekeeper is a technical recruiter or employee at the company at which you are interested in working. To get interviews through this method, I recommend four basic steps. First, you make a list of companies you are interested in. Then you find the contact information for the gatekeeper at those companies. The next step is to write an email pitch or linking message and send it out. Finally, follow up periodically until you get rejections. That's the basics of getting interviews through gatekeepers. I won't dive into details about how to reach out to gatekeepers because I have a blog post on this very subject with email templates that are proven to work. The final method for getting interviews is actually the most effective and that is through referrals. I'm sure most of you have heard about it. Because this is the most effective method for getting to the interview stage, I want to go into more detail about how to ask for and leverage referrals. The first thing to know about referrals is who to actually ask for them. Referrals are the most effective method for getting interviews, but that does not mean that you should start asking random people on LinkedIn for them. You may not hear back at all if you just ask strangers to refer you to their comments. Instead, referrals should come from people who both know you and are familiar with your work. This is why networking is important. If you are seeking a referral from someone who don't know you very well, take the time to put some effort in. Buy them coffee, do an informational interview, and get to know them. Essentially, building a relationship should be the first step to asking for referrals. That's why it's a method that involves the most time and effort. But remember, it's also the most effective way to get interviews. Alright, so let's say that you have people who are willing to refer you. What do you do now? 
your goal should be to make the referral process as smooth as possible for the person who's willing to refer you. So for starters, don't ask them if their company has any openings. Instead, you should do the research yourself and send the person referring you the information for the exact job position you are interested in. Now what? Do you apply for the job through a normal job board or what? Referrals are relatively straightforward, but they can be confusing if you don't know how they work. In most companies, the referrer will use an internal job board to submit the referral. All you need to do as a referee is provide your resume and the job post for which you want to apply. You should not apply for the job through the normal job board at the same time. If you do, the referral will not work. So the basics of a referral are to find the exact position you want to apply for and then give your information to the referrer so that they can submit your application as a referral. You do not have to additionally apply through other means, and you shouldn't, because this can mess with the referral process. Now, if you have a friend that works at a large company like Google with multiple openings, you may be wondering if you can leverage their referral to apply to multiple positions at the same time. The answer is that it depends. Some companies will allow you to apply for multiple positions at once, while others do not. You will need to clarify with whoever has agreed to refer you. If you can apply for multiple positions at the same time, it's worth doing as that will always increase your chances of getting an interview. All right, those are the three basic ways to get interviews. You should be using a combination of all three to give yourself the best chance of getting to the interview stage with at least a few comments. One thing worth mentioning is the importance of a resume. As you can tell, you need a good resume to make any methods work for you. It's worth spending time to double check your resume to make it the best it can be before sending out your applications, reaching out to gatekeepers, or asking for referrals. Does your resume showcase the skills needed for the positions you are applying for? Are you fine-tuning your resume to backsuit each position? If you are unsure how to double check your resume on your own, I have a free resume checklist you can use. Feel free to check the video description to get the link to the checklist. At this point, it can be hard not to stop and ask yourself, what if I do all that and I still don't get interviews? I want to end this video by talking about this question. It can be very easy to get discouraged when job searching. You may have already been job searching for a while and still haven't landed an interview yet. What do you do? If you aren't having success, what can you do to improve your chances? Whether you are looking for an internship or a full-time job, the most important thing to remember is to keep the momentum going. Getting interviews takes time and a lot of applications. If you let yourself become discouraged and slow down your applications, then you will only decrease your chances of getting that interview. Press forward and keep going. The reason I said to keep going is because it does often take longer than you may expect to get results with your job search. It takes time for recruiters to review resumes and get back to you. Don't expect to hear back immediately from many companies and while waiting to hear back, the best thing you can do is to continue with your job search. Now, if you have given the time and your resume is the best it can be and you still aren't getting interviews, it's time to start seriously considering what your problem is. To find a solution that will get you interviews, you need to diagnose your problem correctly. The first thing I would consider is how many applications you have sent. Job searching for a long period of time can make you feel like you aren't getting anywhere, but if you aren't sending out enough applications, the time you have been searching doesn't matter as much. As a general rule, I would say that if you have applied to less than 500 jobs, reach out to 10 gatekeepers, and ask for less than 10 referrals, then the first thing you need to do is simply send out more. If you have sent out at least 500 applications, waited for two to three months, and gotten less than five interviews, then you may need to consider your target position. Such a low rate of application to interview conversion likely indicates that the job market does not feel that your background matches the positions you are looking for. To fix this, there are two options. One, you could switch target positions. If the job market seems to think you aren't suited for one role, then you may need to try another. If you are hesitant to do that, you could also try applying for jobs at the smaller companies and the startups. The competition is much less fierce and you may have a significantly better chance of getting an interview. I know it's hard to give up on the type of job you want and the type of company you want to work for, but sometimes you do have to consider job demand. 
If what you are looking for isn't working, you may need to change where you are looking. That almost wraps up our discussion of getting interviews. But I do have one more thing I want to mention, the hiring season. When working with students, I find that some of them are too concerned about getting in a coming hiring season. They worry that if they are not ready at a certain time of the year, or don't apply at a certain time, that there will not be any openings. These types of worries can drive a person crazy and make the job search process that much more stressful. There are two simple facts that you have to acknowledge when job searching and thinking about the hiring season. One, it is out of your control. You can't control when companies decide to hire. Different factors may impact a company's hiring decisions, such as the overall economy, the industry trend, and the company's financial situation, etc. So different companies have different schedules. Second, many companies hire all year round, especially for startups and growing mid-sized companies. There may be a time when company has more openings than other times, but many companies have some positions available all year round. The bottom line with both of these things is that stressing about the hiring season won't help you land a job in most cases. That being said, I cannot say that the hiring season is a myth. The hiring season does occur when companies get their new budgets for headcounts. The timing for this differs depending on the company. But the common case is that there are more headcounts at the beginning of the year than there are at the end of the year. This means that in January, February, and March, many companies have figured out headcounts and start to post openings and hire new employees, which can make the beginning of the year a good time to look for a job. This is also a wonderful time for students and new grads since intern and university graduate programs are opening up. You can often find career pages specialized for university students and graduates for most big companies. For example, Amazon has a student's program, and with both Meta and Google, you can set a filter to select roles that are specifically for new grads and internships. For smaller public companies such as Lyft and Uber, you can find pages dedicated to those looking to start careers or for people looking for internships. Alright guys, that's everything for this video. Remember that there are three ways to get interviews. Raw applications, reach out to gatekeepers, and leveraging referrals. Referrals are the most effective method, but you will want to use all three as you continue in your job search. This brings us to the end of our second video in the series on landing a design job in 2022. So far, we have looked at both targeting the right position and getting interviews. And in the next video, we will look at interview preparation. I hope you take the time to check it out. Cannot wait to see you next week. Bye guys.